Hello, and welcome back to our channel. Today, I'll be discussing the truth which eventually led to the bankruptcy and collapse of Chuck E. Cheese. But before we get into the details, don't forget to like this video and click the subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Done? Alright then, let's get right into it. The number of bankruptcy filings have been increasing by the day, and one comes across a plethora of companies which were once renowned but now face bankruptcy. Or worse, they have shut down. Seeing these familiar companies file for bankruptcy is almost kind of depressing. But we need to understand the truth, which leads to their demise. This one in particular was a place that was near and dear to my heart, Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese is a famous fast food chain. Sorry, was a famous fast food chain, which is the combination of pizza and arcade games. Looking at this from a theoretical point of view, there is nothing more that a child could ask for. Pizza and games at the same place? Sounds like an amazing deal. But if we look at some statistics from 2019, we can see that 56% of their sales came from entertainment and merchandise, while less than half of it, 44% to be exact, came from food and beverages. And if that sounds counterintuitive, it is exactly what they aimed for, since they had a higher profit margin on selling entertainment and merchandise. They claim that the place was intended to be visited by families, and especially for children who had their birthday parties. Coming from those same statistics, 16% of their revenue came from Reserve Birthday Celebration Bank because they could accommodate over 400 guests at a time and had nearly 70 rides, games, and attractions. One of their star arcade games was the Ticket Blaster, which is a tube-shaped contraption within which you try to catch as many tickets as you can as they blow around in the wind. Now, I personally would love to go inside that thing and give it a shot, but it wasn't around during my time. But it sure does look like a lot of fun. Now, as weird as it may seem, Chuck E. Cheese decided to give their iconic mascot a makeover. Like, what is this? This is clearly not the image that comes to people's minds when they think of the term Charles Entertainment Cheese. And yeah, by the way, that is actually what Chuck E. Cheese stands for, and it is pretty straight up hilarious. The new mascot wears pants and has a guitar and doesn't rock that symbolic hat. He looks and feels much different to the iconic mascot, which was recognizable from a mile away. And with that being said, the bankruptcy is relatively new. Ideally, they would just close off a few branches and rebound back from the setback. And as far as the reason for it is concerned, they've been in a very dangerous financial situation for quite a while now. And couple that with the pandemic? and they couldn't deal with the loss in sales on top of their already dwindling numbers. And what's surprising is that this bankruptcy isn't even their first one. So let's have a bit of a history lesson now. Chuck E. Cheese was started back in 1977 by a guy named Nolan Bushnell, who also happens to be one of the founding members of the former video game titan and pioneer Atari. Chuck E. Cheese actually started as a subdivision for Atari. After selling a gargantuan amount of video games, Bushnell got the idea for starting Chuck E. Cheese and setting foot in the fast food industry. He came up with the unique idea of combining pizza and video games. He settled on pizza because it took a certain amount of time to make, and as it turned out that wait time was the perfect duration to play some games. He also had the idea to incorporate animatronics into the brand so that he could further stand out from the competition. He recognized that it was a cost-effective and successful way of grabbing people's attention. Chuck E. Cheese was originally supposed to be called Coyote's Pizza, but something unexpected happened. The coyote costume that they had ordered for their animatronics turned out to actually be a rat costume. In true Bushnell fashion, he decided to run with it and use it to his advantage. He decided to call the restaurant Rick Rat's Pizza which sounds absolutely wrong on so many levels, and thankfully he was talked out of it. In the end, Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater was the name that the team agreed upon. It was a good name, and the cheese part of the name forced you to smile as you said it, so they thought it would be a neat little thing to top it all off. 
Now, the restaurant has evolved over time, but at the heart of it, their general principle remains the same. While Chuck E. Cheese was a division of Atari, he had recently sold off Atari to Warner. And even though the restaurant was entirely his own idea and came to life due to his own hard work, unfortunately, he was not the owner of Chuck E. Cheese. As it turned out, and luckily for him, Warner weren't really interested in running a quirky restaurant, and they were willing to sell it to him for the price of $500,000. Bushnell agreed to buy it from them and paid them the sum over the course of five whole years. Soon afterwards, he separated from Atari and started focusing all of his efforts on Chuck E. Cheese. The first restaurant was a huge success, and without hesitation, he started opening new locations. Before he knew it, he was approached by people who wanted to make their own Chuck E. Cheese franchise. The most notable of these deals was the one he made with a guy named Robert Brock. He was the owner of a hotel company and was interested in owning multiple Chuck E. Cheese franchises. The two penned down the deal, but Brock pulled out at the last second because he thought he could work with someone else and make his own restaurant chain, which would follow those same principles. Bushnell sued Brock for breaking the contract, and at the end, Brock ended up creating his own chain called Showbiz Pizza Place but he had to pay Bushnell a certain percentage of the sales. In the early 80s, the two brands competed and went neck and neck with each other. Both of them were diversifying so that they could keep growing. Then things suddenly took a turn for the worse in 1984. You see, back in those days, if a Chuck E. Cheese opened up in your town, you were almost certain to check it out. This was because these places had a novelty aspect to them and because the people had not experienced something like this before. This meant that when a new Chuck E. Cheese opened up, it would get a lot of traction. But as one would expect, things would eventually slow down, and in the worst case, come to a halt altogether. Bushnell made a couple of rash calls because he was in a rush to open up as many new locations as he could. This was because he wanted to capitalize on the novelty aspect of things and expand while it was still unique. This led to most of the Chuck E. Cheese locations being in sketchy areas and in less than ideal spots. And Bushnell wasn't the only one who was taking this route. The same thing happened to Brock as well. To top it all off, there was the great video game crash of 1983, which basically signaled to the downfall of arcades with the introduction of home consoles. To put this all into perspective, Bushnell had gone into debt solely to open up new locations right before people stopped caring about the identity of their business. This meant that the coming months would have poorer sales than usual, meaning that Chuck E. Cheese would be unable to keep up with their high debt and forcing them into bankruptcy. This actually marked the end of the original chain. On the other hand, Showbiz was able to make it out of this fiasco by refinancing their loans and selling off shares of their company. Not only did they survive, they actually made more money and were able to acquire Chuck E. Cheese assets after their bankruptcy. This was truly a strange turn of events. Maybe it was even a first that the competitor and the imitator ended up being more successful than the original. This is the same as if McDonald's was beaten by your local fast food chain, which happened to imitate their style. The end result of this whole ordeal was a much larger company, which owned nearly 250 restaurants under both names. Some transfer of ownerships happened through the years, but the two chains stayed together, albeit as separate brands. Later, they realized that it would be simpler and more efficient to just simply combine the chains. And that is when they started converting all of the showbiz restaurants into Chuck E. Cheese restaurants. Now, this was kind of ironic since the company itself was called Showbiz Pizza, but all of the restaurants which came under it were called Chuck E. Cheese. After a roller coaster ride of an 18 year run, in 1998, they changed the name of the company to CEC Entertainment, officially rebranding as Chuck E. Cheese. Now, getting back to the recent issues, they have been facing problems regarding customer retention and attracting new customers. To fight this off, they even tried new things, such as the revitalization scheme, in hopes that it would bring back some life into the business. But it wasn't very successful. They tried to put some of the emphasis on parents, but that was honestly kind of counterintuitive, 
since parents aren't really fond of this place since it gets pretty noisy and wild with all the kids around. They tried adding new items to the menu which parents would like more, and also putting an emphasis on parents and their marketing as well. They also discontinued the token system and shifted towards a card system which would keep track of points. They even remodeled nearly a quarter of their locations. Now, these may have helped a little, but in addition to the unpredictable revenue, they had to deal with higher expenses. This was because the increase in ingredient costs and also the changes implemented to minimum wage in many of the states. So when you combine their higher costs and lower revenue, it results in a consistently lower operating income. This means that while they are operating these restaurants, they are making less and less money each year. Even though the operating income has been going down, it is nowhere near the negative and was still well above the positive threshold. While these issues exist, it's not the real issue for their recent bankruptcy. In 2014, their total debt nearly tripled, going to over $1 billion. This was because in 2014, Chuck E. Cheese was bought by a private firm, Apollo Global Management, for the price of nearly $950 million. In the same year, Chuck E. Cheese spent nearly $113 million to acquire Peter Piper's Pizza, which was an Arizona-based pizza chain. After those deals, they were loaded with debt and the revenue they were generating wasn't making up for it. Even if you make millions of dollars each year, it means nothing if you have over a billion dollars in debt. This way you will never be able to pay it off. And there is an even deeper layer to all of this. Everything that we have talked about so far was without taking interest into account. Being in debt means that you also have to face a large amount of interest on that debt. The operating cost mentioned earlier was without the interest, and if you take it into account, it would mean that they were losing money each year. Chuck E. Cheese have reported losses in five of the last six years, and it seems unlikely that they will come out of this. Chuck E. Cheese is the same as a person who is living so far beyond their means that even a small hurdle in their revenue led to something big like bankruptcy. All I can do is hope that Chuck E. Cheese makes it out alive. I do still have some very fond memories of that place. And that was all for today's video, so let me know down in the comments what you think about Chuck E. Cheese and their bankruptcy, and if you still like to visit their restaurants, provided they still have them in your town. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out the other videos which are on screen right now, and while you are at it, why not share with your friends? I'll be seeing you in the next one.